Tone Mapper is a tool in the most recent versions of the shader that allow you to draw specific color channels over your model in its final render pose to fix any errors that you spot and wish to fix before the final render that you present to people. Utilizing Tone Mapper should be one of the last steps that you do, as the process to use it requires you to be unable to change the model any further in its pose, in its, the camera position, or anything similar. The first thing we're going to do is apply any modifiers that affect the base mesh of our model. This would mean that the armature modifier, we're going to apply that so that we are now in a static pose. If you're using a data transfer modifier that fixes the normals of the face, we want to apply that as well. The geometry nodes, if you're doing the geometry node outline, we actually are not going to apply that, we're just going to hide that with these two options. We'll turn them on at a later time. Next we need to go to our object data properties, we're going to go to UV maps, and we're going to create a new UV map. And for this case, we're just going to create one named projection. Make sure that you have the new UV map selected and highlighted. Next, we're going to make a window for our UV map so that we can actually see what we're doing. And we're going to go into edit mode, select all, and what, as you can see, then there's the normal UV map. We're going to open up the search field or press U, and we're going to search for project from view bounds. As you can see, we made our UV projection the same as what our camera can see. And the option here is right here in the UV win menu. Now we need to create our tone mapper texture. We can go into the image editor, change from view to paint, you'll we'll find out in a moment. We're going to create a new texture. We'll name this tone mapper. You want the width and the height of this texture to be large, probably the same size as twice your render size. So 1080p, you make that double, to 2460, whatever the heck it is, math. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna make a 4K texture. And then we want the color to be 0 0.5 intensity. And hit OK, and we're gonna create the new texture. Now, inside of our shader editor, we're going to make a new image texture node. And we're going to change the texture to our tone mapper. But before we connect anything, we want to change linear to closest. Connect this to here, and then we create a UV map node and connect that to the vector. Change this to our projection, and we are now ready to work. If we go into our texture paint mode, we can see that there is a view inside the image editor. There's also, but I like, I prefer working inside of the 3D view. If we change it to tool, I'm going to change stroke, Oop, not stroke, we want fall off. And we're going to change it to this one here. So it's just a flat. And as we can see, if we change our intensity to 0 0.25 for shadow one, we can paint shadow one. Zero for shadow two. 0 0.75 for base and then one for specular. It's kind of hard to tell here, but we draw it on his carapace. You can see we're drawing some specular on here. If you want the model to use its original coloring for the normal shading, change it to 0 0.5. This is the reset color. And if you just draw over everything, it will revert back to what it normally looks like. We also need to separate any materials such as the decal material from the body. If you don't, then we go and try to paint some shadows you'll have an error such as this. But if we go into edit mode, and we select the decal, use P, separate by selection, we can then either hide it for now, but we can actually just leave it for now, and we can select our body, go back to texture paint, and when we draw, we can see that it draws underneath it now. Questions I have had from people that have been beta testing the tone mapper. Uh, when some people have been drawing shadows, Allow me just a moment. They draw a shadow or another color ramp, like such as like this. You may notice that the, hopefully it shows up on YouTube, but the shadow has jaggedness to it. Uh, this is due to the resolution of the tone mapper texture itself. As you can see, as we draw, it shows up the same here in the tone mapper texture. You can increase the resolution of your tone mapper texture, but about, you know, 8K would probably be the maximum I would go 
but feel free to go as high as you want. The reason why is because when you zoom out to the camera view, the changes that you make, you won't notice these jagged lines. Uh, also, you don't necessarily need to be in the camera view to make the edits. As you can see here, if I just paint some stuff, maybe I, mean, I, you know, oh, there's, you know, some shadows going on here. If we go back, you can see it's still working just fine. You don't need the camera view, but it helps you with seeing where you're going to be working.